Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Facebook world. Uh, my name is Gail. Thank you for joining me on Tuesdays with Gail. I'm joined by Ralph. He's famous as well for his wonderful videos, if you've ever seen them. Uh, he's the mortgage guy, right? Yeah, yes, the mortgage, the mortgage guy. guy. The guy. <laughs> he does some really great, funny videos. Uh, I'll probably send, take some links and, and send them uh, or attach them to my page. But what we're going to talk about today is how to fill out a home loan application. Sometimes it can seem a little intimidating. I was telling Ralph earlier, I filled them out before and I get intimidated by them. Uh, I don't always fill it out correctly and sometimes I just uh, turn in whatever and then I'll talk to the lender afterwards and ask them to clarify on some parts. I know some of my buyers have also asked me questions about what to fill out for the loan. So we're just going to talk briefly about the loan process. So filling out a loan application. Ralph, help us out. By the way, he's with Network Funding, if I had to say that already. Um, he's a great loan officer. He's very patient. He's been very patient with a lot of the buyers I've worked with. So does a loan application, this is a copy, or this is an example of a paper loan application. Does this have to, for, is it looks like, <laughs> it feels like 20. That's a lot. Um, does it have to be filled out correctly? Um, for the most part, I mean, there's four main sections uh, to the loan application. Really, what you really want to focus on is the, the borrower information section. That is going to have your name, your social security number, your date of birth, your current address, so what we can kind of have a two-year history of your, of your address. That's the main part. The second main part is your employment. You know, who do you work for? How long have you worked for them? Um, those are the two main parts that, that people stress out about, but they are the, the most basic. Um, and then obviously the third part, the third part is uh, any rough estimate of your assets, you know, any assets you're going to be using for your, your down payment or your closing costs. There is no wrong answer because if you fill out the application wrong, a good loan officer will, will go over that with you as soon as you fill it out mm -hmm. to make sure that there's no discrepancies. I, I've come across that where um, there's a part in here about uh, dec your declaration page. You know, do you owe any child support? And people accidentally put yes. I go, okay, how much are you paying in child support? They're like, I don't owe child support. Okay, we'll just put no then. You know, there's no wrong answer to filling out an application, I think, but it's very intimidating. I think that's why people ultimately don't do it. <laughs> you know, because yeah. it's like, oh, I don't want to do all that anymore. Or they'll start it and then they'll finish it. Right. So, okay, so as far as assets, what would be considered an asset? So a lot of people, um, I think the old way of looking into mortgages is, uh, you know, I have a car, it's worth 20 grand, and I only own 10 grand. And that's not the case. You're not going to use your car as your down payment, right, or any mm -hmm. type of collateral. So really, any account that you are going to use for your down payment or for, for more closing costs will come from. Do you have to disclose all of your accounts? No, you do not. You do not. Okay. Uh, the, I mean, as far as that is concerned, just the accounts that you're using for the transaction. I, I get retirement accounts a lot. I just ignore okay. them because they're tied up in stocks and bonds and you don't okay. have readily access to it. You're not even going to use it for your down payment. Okay. So I put that to the side. I mean, I just really look like your checking and savings accounts or any type of uh, CDs. How about um, if you get ch if you receive child support, would that be considered? That would be considered income. Okay. Not so much an asset. Uh, so, with, so you would include that in here? Correct. Yeah, okay. you'd, uh, you'd include that in the income uh, section, which is section five. Of the application, it's very basic. Even if you got, even if you rounded up a number that I receive, you know, I don't know, I don't know what child support goes for these days, but even let's if, say six hundred, six hundred bucks, average. and it's and it, per the divorce decree, it court ordered child support comes out to be five fifty eight. Well, then we'll just correct it for five fifty eight. And again, there's no wrong answer. Uh, this just gets the process and the conversation started, and then from there, then we can go down the list and tick and tie, which is you know what's more accurate. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. Just try to get as close to it as you can. Now, I know there's different ways to fill out a loan application. The Correct. preferable way is... Online. That's always best. It's the but quickest, easiest way to do it. There are some people who are uh, technology inept. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. then for them, there's other options, right. which would be... So I would say in order of preference, in order of convenience, it would go from online application. You can fill it out in your PJs, right? Yeah. Second order of uh, preference would be a phone call. Uh, a loan officer, you know, can, can take the application over the phone um, after hours, during hours. Again, you can do that in your PJs too, right? It's very easy. 
the third way of doing it would basically be coming in, you know, meeting the loan officer either at a coffee shop or at their office. <laughs> But then you gotta block off two hours, you know, commute time, <laughs> yeah. commute time, and then all that other stuff. So that's in order of preference the way I would kind of uh, um, tell my borrower. Okay. Then. And it's easy. It's always easy to go online. So all three you're able to do. Correct. And okay. it's all the same information regardless whatever route they choose. It's the same application. So uh, there are some people who like to meet or they like to go through the application first and they like to be on the phone. So that's gonna be be an option always as well. Right. Do you do any um, thing on the weekends? Like if people want to meet on the weekends? Of course, of course. That's that's the, the biggest benefit about going to a, a mortgage company, an independent mortgage company versus a bank. You know, I get that question asked a lot. Well, what's the difference? And typically when I'm talking to my clients, it's 8 o'clock at night. I go, mm -hmm. well, you can't talk to your banker at 8 o'clock at night. That's true. You know, you can't meet your banker for coffee on a Sunday, you yeah. know, because they only stay in the confines of their offices. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, weekends, I always say to my realtor referral partners and even my clients, I'm working when you need me to. I'm working mm -hmm. when you're working, so just let me know and we'll, we'll get it done. Okay. I've even done an application on via FaceTime. Oh, because, nice. Because it, it has that personal touch. Yeah. Because people want to meet in person because, you know, you're talking finances. You're talking your personal information. And the only way to do that is if you meet somebody, and sometimes you, you can't meet someone, Yeah. so let's jump on FaceTime. We've got, yeah. we got technology at our hands. Why not use it? There you go. So if you are wanting to fill out an application, he'll get on FaceTime with you and help you go along the application as you're filling it out. That's good to know. Just don't be in your PJs. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to go. We're gonna look at an application online. Again, I'm feeding this both live through Facebook and Instagram. So if you have any questions as we're going through this, now, is this application universal to anyone filling out for the yes. state of Texas in the United States of America? Yes. Uh, as far as for Texas, I can talk more about that because I'm licensed in Texas. Okay. It may be a little bit different once you get outside of Texas, but... For can the... you speak on that real quick? What's the difference between... Because some people go, you know, look at the commercials for, you know, those rocket mortgage, right. quick and whatever, and they're out of Utah or Montana. What's the difference between those lenders and... The, in state, in Houston, local. Right. So network funding has a, a you know, they're, they're licensed in say 30 states okay. uh, as a as a mortgage company. Okay. As an individual mortgage uh, loan, loan officer, I'm licensed in Texas. Mm -hmm. Now they do have some blanket uh, uh, licenses of, for like Florida, you know, mm -hmm. the Eastern Coast states. Uh, you can get those at one time, but uh, for for my purposes, I'm for now only licensed in Texas. Okay. With Rocket Mortgage Mortgage similar thing they have a blanket 50 state you know okay. um, um, license and I'm, I'm assuming any licensed loan officers will, mm -hmm. will use that brokerage license yeah. to, to take an application from personally what I've uh, noticed is that when you're dealing with out-of-state lenders they may not be as privy or as quick to know of certain programs that maybe Texas has to offer right. where local um, lenders will know about it exactly and then you have the relationship with the, the realtor itself yeah. and and most times when you go through that rock market mortgage type of avenue, you're going to probably get a different person every time mm -hmm. you call. And they're yeah. just going to be reading notes on your file versus when you're working with a mortgage uh, a guy like myself, you, I'm, I know your file. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with it from start to finish. Exactly. So. Okay, so I'm going to flip these real quick. I'm just going to show you quickly uh, an example of Ralph's online application. I'm going to leave his contact information after this, and then we'll be done. So let me switch views on my Facebook live feed. Did that work? Yes, I think that worked. Yep. So, just positioning this a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay. So this is his website. What so, was it again? So it's www.nflp.com forward slash Ralph Tapio. Okay. I'll include that on the comments below. So this is where you would apply. Yep. And once you start the online application, do you have to finish it? Does it save it for you, you at any point? It, you can save it later. Um, you can upload files directly to your application so you don't have to send emails. And a lot of people um, are real big on, okay, well, I want to make sure my, my uh, information is secure. Well, they can upload their tax returns or pay stubs directly online mm -hmm. into the application. Okay, so you have to create an account. Correct. That's why you. That's why you create an account so you can actually save it for later. I see. And I can. I can create one right now if you'd like to show how easy it is. Sure. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to show the paper version. Sure. Um, so Ralph's going to just create an account just so you can see. And I'm going to show the paper version. 
So this is page one, and it's just going to ask again some basic information. Um, a lot of basic information. Yeah, this is what kind of gets overwhelming when you see it all on one page. And this is page two. And page three. And page four. Yeah, this is, you're applying for a home loan, so they're going to want to know a little bit about everything and then your signature. Like I mentioned earlier, so you got to look at it from the point of view if, if you're lending people money. Yeah. If you're lending people money, you're going to want to know a little bit about them. Oh, sorry. To make sure that, uh, there we go. Awesome. Okay, and then there was somebody that wanted to see it here. So I'm going to, do you want to hold this one? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I got you, I got you. Okay, so I'm gonna switch views here so you can see also. All right, so I got both my Facebook and Instagram feed. This is the application. Uh, Ralph created an account just to use an example, so you will have to create an account to do this. You start the application. I think maybe the online application won't feel as overwhelming as the paper, because the paper, you see all of this all at once. Yes. And that's overwhelming. Yes. I would just give up. It, it, it can be, but like, like we said, there's no wrong answer here. I mean, because yeah. ultimately we're going to go back over the information with you. So it really starts off, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to purchase a home or are you going to refinance a current home? So right here, we're going for a purchase. And then uh, will you have a co-borrower? Typically, if you're married, you want your spouse on the loan, that'll be your co-borrower. If you want your mom on the loan, yeah. that'll still be a co-borrower. So you can click, for this purpose, we'll just say no for today. Is it easier to include? them and then remove them later if they are not uh, helping yeah. your yes. your goals yes. okay. I, I would prefer that option because it's very easy to remove people okay because when you have people you want to add last minute you have to redo the whole approval process all over got again. it yeah. so if there's someone you want to add just to see it's good to add them in the beginning and if it turns out that they're not going to help uh, you're getting your loan then you can remove them after yep. that's good so then we'll go with uh, first name and then we'll go over to the last name. And it's going to ask me to type in my social. I probably will not do that online. No, we don't need to do that. <laughs> but you will have to do that yes, you on would. the actual application. Yes, you would. Um, uh, and then do uh, you want me to go ahead and fill, finish all this here? No, I just want them to get a sense of how like this online version looks and how it's not as, I guess, intimidating as receiving. Because it's basic, it is the same thing that you would receive on this paper. Exactly. So, so whereas this, you know, you see it all at once. And the main section, again, is right here. Uh, there is no right or wrong answer. This is your, your borrower information. The first piece of it is mm -hmm. who are you, um, you know, social security number, so we can run your credit to verify your debts, make sure there's no judgments on your, on your, on your report. Mm -hmm. A lot of people tend to think that, um, oh, I don't want you to run my credit. It's going to hurt my score. That's not always the case. Um, so it doesn't hurt your score? Not in every case. Now, if you're out there shopping for... Um, you know, your Best Buy, you got a Macy's card, then you go buy a new car, then you're, oh, I'm going to apply for a mortgage all within 30 days, then that's when it probably has the potential to, to, to lower your score. Yeah. So, okay. um, but if you're just looking for home loans. Exactly. If you're just looking for home loans and haven't had your credit pulled in, in a while, um, if you haven't had your credit pulled in a while, it's definitely not going to hurt your score. Yeah. Um, I've seen even cases where people are shopping around, and I can see them inquiring with two, or, you know, two other mortgage companies, and their score actually went up. A oh, nice. So it's not always a bad thing. That's just a misconception. Um, it is a misconception. So it's good that you cleared that up. Well, if you have any other questions about the application process, if you want a copy of the application, or if you want to go online and fill, uh, see about filling one out, Ralph is your guy. He can help you. So yeah. I'm going to tag him on this post after I publish it. If you are looking to buy a house or you know someone that's looking to buy a house, this is the first step basically, to fill out this application. Again, online, over the phone, yep. good old paper copy, um, or FaceTime. He'll do FaceTime like exactly. he's done before. I do FaceTime. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, to, to follow up with that, yes, it is the first step. I look at it this way. The average house in Houston is, what, like 225000 give or take? Yeah. Not everybody has $225,000, and that's where I come in. I come in to provide the difference, whether what you have to put down and the difference you'll need to finance that house. So, it's crucial to know what you can or can't afford, how much you can or cannot borrow. Correct. And that's always... So you know what to, my apologies, yeah. so you know what to start shopping for and you know uh, what you can start looking at. Exactly. You don't want to be wasting, you know, uh, you don't want to waste your time looking at homes that 
in your price range. Right. And it helps us develop a game plan. Yes. You know, if you may not, even if it's let's say in the weird instance you don't qualify today, it helps us develop a game plan to get you qualified within three months, six months, or whatever that time frame may be. And uh, Ralph is good at following up. So uh, yeah, even if you don't qualify now, at least you'll know where you stand now. Uh, but this is the first step. So if you're looking to buy, if you know someone that's looking to buy, please, uh, once I publish this video, share it, uh, share the post with friends or family members that you know that are looking to buy. He can help you set up your finances. I help you look for the houses. And together, we're a team to make it happen. Yep. So any questions you have, please reach out to me uh, through Messenger or Instagram. <laughs> I'm on both today. And uh, till next time, I'll see you all next Tuesday. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. See ya.